I did 24 hour comic day and I will share with you how it went and what I've learned. Welcome back to Pencils and Stories. My name is Henrike Dijkstra. I make and teach comics. If you like to make comics as well, connect with me and subscribe below. In 2019, I finally managed to not miss 24 hour comic day. The 24 hour comic day challenge is created by Scott McCloud, who wrote and drew the books Understanding Comics and Making Comics amongst others. The idea behind the challenge is to improve your comic making speed, to prove that comics actually don't have to be this massive undertaking and that you can actually make one in 24 hours if you wanted to. As a bonus, it forces you to not mess around, come to the point fairly quickly and be economic. Those are really useful skills if you want to make comics in general. The challenge consists of doing 24 pages, one for every hour with no preparations. You need to do everything in the entire comic process in those 24 hours, including coming up with the idea and even proofreading for print. I had already made around 90 comic pages for my comic Recollection City by the time I did this challenge, uh, but I still learned some surprising new things that I've since then implemented into my comic process. And in this video, I will share with you the things that I've learned from doing this. First, I want to talk about health. And as a little disclaimer, I made this comic in just under 15 hours instead of 24. Uh, that means I wasn't able to ink it, let alone color it, but I made 24 pages all in pencil. I could theoretically ink right over them. The main reason I didn't take the full 24 hours is because I really cannot stay awake at night. It also really makes me very miserable for two or three days to miss any sleep. So that's why I opted to have a, have a normal sleep, get up a little early and then start the challenge. Um, I also wanted to promote healthy art habits as kind of like my thing that I, that I really want to do long term. So I really wanted to show that you can still do this challenge by working hard, but also taking breaks and taking care of yourself. So even though I didn't do the entire comic in the 24 hours, I still got very far. And if I took another 15 hours, I'd probably be able to finish the entire thing. So it's still, the point still stands that you can make a comic fairly fast if you want to. Uh, so what I did is I got up fairly early, um, seven o'clock, I was up and running at uh, 8 a.m. And then I kept working around till around 10, 30 p.m. The breaks especially are super important. I became a sign language interpreter 12 years ago and especially combining that with drawing, which makes you sit in the same posture a lot of the time for a very long amount of time, uh, that has really uh, caused me to experience a lot of pain and strain in my neck, my shoulders, my arms and my hands regularly. And I just want to emphasize like pain is not normal. I know in some circles it's like seen as a badge of honor. Like, yeah, I drew until my hands were falling off and stuff. It's not normal guys. And the older you get, the more problems it's going to give you. So uh, it was really important to me in this day to take a regular break. So I didn't have to put my hands on ice in the evening and I actually didn't need to. And I didn't need to take any painkillers because uh, even though I experienced some pain during the day, I kept paying attention to it and took breaks wherever I needed to. And that really helped me. And that's what I want to emphasize. Like, don't work yourself hours on end uh, without taking breaks, without taking care of yourself, because your body will let you know eventually that is not happy. So especially when you do a speed run, like this challenge is, um, you know, or you have a deadline or whatever, just, just be mindful of your body and take regular breaks. It will help you in the long run. It will actually make you more productive, but that's for later videos. But that was really, that was one of the most important parts of the day. So all of this helped me to still be able to interpret later in the week. And I also ate regularly. I prepared my food the day before actually, so I didn't have to uh, amount any time for cooking. Um, and I drank regularly as well. I had a bottle of water next to me. Again, to emphasize, don't work yourself to the point where you permanently damage your body because that's only gonna hurt your art and your art career. My second point, making comics traditionally was still faster than doing it digitally. So I'm now used to having handy tools like Clip Studio Paint where I can just really easily make layouts and do word balloons and lettering and everything. But this comic I drew by hand because I didn't want to spend any time like scanning things in, making photos and touching everything up. So uh, it actually wasn't that bad. Uh, hand drawing my balloons and my panel layouts and, and hand lettering actually, because it really made me mindful of my layouts 
and I really had to pay attention to where I put my word balloons and, and that I left enough room for text because I knew that every mistake would, would be another about erasing things and redoing it and that will cost me time. So it made me really mindful. It also threw me back to uh, when I was a little younger and I would make a lot of short comics and I would do all of them on paper. Uh, I would make them usually in black and white, just ink lines and um, uh, not any color. Uh, color makes it more complicated. but. I still remember that back then too, like I could make comics pretty, uh, pretty fast. Um, and you know, paper and pen is still one of the fastest ways I know to make comics. And uh, it was a really nice throwback. And I was like, oh yeah, this is actually not more complicated. Like sometimes I make that really complicated in my head. I have to say though, if I would have colored this comic, I would still have done that digitally because that's the fastest way I know how to color. Um, but since I didn't do that, pen and paper were still like super fast. So don't think that you need all those fancy materials and tablets and all that kind of stuff. Like you can make comics on scrap paper or post-it notes. Like you, you can make comics on paper and it's totally fine. You can just use what you have. I'm very curious if you ever did 24 hour comic day. Let me know, have you ever done it? And how did you like it? Have you not done it? And would you like to try? I'm curious, let me know in the comments below. Another point that was really surprising to me is that I skipped entire steps that I usually have in my comic process. So I woke up, I kind of had a basic idea. I couldn't help myself. I knew that wasn't part of, I knew that's part of the preparation, but that's all I did. Like I, I had an idea and I was like, okay, I'm gonna park it until it is the day off and then I'm gonna think about the story. So I really wanted to go into the city to actually um, write out my story because I write really well when I'm in a coffee shop surrounded by uh, people and noise. So I really wanted to do that. So I took the bus to the city. It's only it's only five minutes. Um, and I thought about the story I wanted to do in the bus. I sat down, I gave myself an hour to come up with the story. So I wrote out the story in bullet points, let loose all my knowledge about story structure on the idea that I had. And that is something that I usually do. Like I will write out my story in bullet points, but then I switched things up. I actually took a second piece of paper, I numbered it one to 24, and then I wrote one line of something that I wanted to have happen on that page. So I had a page of 24 lines and those lines are my pages. And that's something I don't normally do. But when I did that, I was done. I was like, okay, I can go straight to thumbnails. Then I immediately, I went back home. I immediately went into page thumbnails. I do not normally work this way. I usually take a bunch of post-it notes and I draw panels on them. And then I rearrange them in a way that makes sense for a page. Now, since I already had that page of 24 lines and I knew what I wanted to happen on each page, I could immediately dive in, make a page out of that. So I dropped the entire step of doing panel thumbnails out of my process. And usually thumbnailing takes a lot of uh, time for me because also it's my favorite part of the process. So I really drag it out. Usually what I do like about the paneling uh, thing is that I can think in shots, don't necessarily immediately have to think about the entire layout of the page. Uh, so it works for me, but I could literally drop it out of the process for 24 hour comic day without any problem actually. Uh, and I actually really liked working this way because in only a few hours I had the entire story uh, thumbnailed out and I could immediately go into my sketchbook that I drew my comic in and make the entire thing uh, like in final layout form. So that's what, that was something that I really liked and was very surprising to me actually. Also when drawing, I was way more careful when drawing uh, this time because I had a little time. Uh, normally I do have several sketch passes and drawing passes, but now I try to nail the drawings more in one go. Um, also make them really clean so I can ink right on top of them. So I was way more careful actually paying attention to, more, paying more attention to what I was doing Basically, uh, also I made, um, I did some character designs before I started drawing. I made sure that the characters were really easy to draw. Um, also, uh, I deliberately set my comic to be in nature because I love drawing nature and it's, it's fairly easy to me. Um, that was something I did. Uh, so I immediately drew in way much more detail on the pages. The only pitfall with that is, is that I love drawing forests and I love drawing nature things. So I got I got really sucked into drawing the details, more detail than I needed to, uh, because when it comes to leaves and 
tree barks and stuff. Uh, I could have actually nailed that in the inking if, if I would have done inking. So I didn't have to draw out all the details, but I still did. And that made me lose a little bit of time, not too much. Uh, but when I was drawing the forests, I could tell at one point like, okay, I need to move on. I need to, I need to draw faster. So yeah, but um, the really careful drawing was something that uh, I really liked. It was a slightly different headspace that I'm normally in. So that was also a very uh, big insight that I wanted to take with me uh, when drawing Recollection City. So after 15 hours, the entire 24 pages were drawn. I didn't have time to ink it anymore. So it turned into a sketch comic, uh, but still it is a, finished comic and flip through it. That was all I did in the 24 hours. So yeah, and that last point brings me to my final insight and that is the importance of mindset. Now I finished my comic, I was done and I grabbed my phone and I scrolled through the hashtag of 24 hour comic day to see what other people had done. And then I made a mistake. I compared myself to them. I know for a fact that there was nothing I could have done that made me go any faster. Like apart from some slight shortcuts and getting lost in details a little bit, that would only have given me around 30 minutes to an hour of extra time. So I really did everything I could, but I still felt that I had failed for a little moment. I still felt defeated when I saw that other people had finished inking. I realized later that I'd set my expectations too high. I secretly hoped that I would have been able to get to inking as well, but I didn't have 24 hours. I had 15. If I had worked for 24 hours, which would have definitely ruined my shoulders and my hands, I would have had nine more hours. For sure I would have been able to finish inking then. So why in the world was I comparing myself to somebody who worked for longer than I did? And I do this a lot and maybe you do you do as well. Like you see all the artwork online, you see other comics, and you have this idea that they just work harder or they have some shortcuts somewhere. But the truth is often they just put in more hours than you. They simply work longer. And that was a big eye opener to me a few years ago. There are people who simply spend more time on their comic than I do. It's not better or worse, but that's a choice that I make or it is because I don't have much more free time. And yes, that means they can update faster and more often than I can. They are not having some kind of shortcut that I don't. And it's the same for this 24 hour comic day. I made a deliberate choice to take a third of the time off to be able to sleep and to save my hands. And that is okay. It's okay to make those choices, but it has those consequences. It is a, it is a trade off somewhere. You have to, you have to make those decisions as long as you are deliberate and conscious about them. Uh, there is no right or wrong answer. The time pressure made me work smart and economic. And I, it taught me things that I can actually use to save time and recollection city. So that's a win. Also my little comic was finished. It wasn't polished but it was a finished story beginning to end drawn and all. I'm sure a lot of you can relate. So I just want to encourage you like mindset is a very big part of this. Make conscious choices, stick with them and then celebrate your accomplishments, celebrate your wins. When you've worked hard, pat yourself on the back, give yourself a compliment and then get started on the next thing with more skills and experience than before. I've heard about my insights and about the benefits of doing a short comic in a short amount of time. If you want to make a short comic and really dive deep into the comic process and learn new things, then be sure to put yourself in the notification list for my course, your comic journey. It's a 10 week life course that's mentored and that takes you through the entire comic process and get a roadmap for making a comic from blank page to finished product. You can find more information at pencilsandstories.com slash your comic journey. The link is in the description below. You can all read up on all the info there. And also you can find the form there to put yourself on a notification list. So you get a email when I launch my course again later in this year. You can also find the link to the comic I made for 24 hour comic day in the description below. I posted it specifically for this video. Let me know in the comments below if you found these insights helpful. If they were indeed helpful, be sure to subscribe, share the video with a friend, hit the like button, and I will see you next week when I will have a special treat for you. I have interviewed my friend Anya Marcos. 
She's well known for having been a community manager at the Odley Academy for years. She's now the face of Etcher Lab and uh, she works on her own children's books as well. So I interviewed her about doing her own children's book project. She's also a very strong networker. So we talked about that, about the artist community, and it's just a really, really great conversation. So I'm super pumped to share it with you. Uh, tune in next week. For now, I wanna thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome week and see you in the next video.